Well, I think we all know what this is. That is a Fluke 9010A microsystem troubleshooter running version 3A of the firmware. It's old. Not very many of them around anymore. <clears throat> they are expensive. We're in luck because there is a replacement for it called the Flucom, which you see right here. This is a build. It's a build available on GitHub. And one can download the instruction assembly manual. It's based on a Pi 4B. Here's the Pi 4B on the bottom. I have 128 gig flashcard in it that contains the 64-bit uh, Pi OS. I want to talk a little bit about the build for this particular product. The level shifter chips, 3.3 volts to 5 volts. There's three of them. I was able to source directly from Texas Instruments. They were pretty hard to find from Mouser or DigiKey. The uh, MOSFETs, which are also used for level translation, um, were hard to find. I got mine off of Amazon. It was a little risky, but I, uh, uh, I did get them, and they worked just fine. I'm running the Pi 4 and the 9010B uh, replacement for that guy along with some software uh, off of a, a single 9 volt power supply which is plugged into this old school Variac so that we can see how much current is being drawn and there is the power supply plugged into the Variac so in a little bit we'll power that on and See how it goes. All of the other parts were sourced from either DigiKey or Mouser. As I mentioned earlier, the bottom Raspberry Pi 4B 64-bit system is running the 64-bit OS. And there is a special 64-bit version of Wiring Pi for the GPIO capabilities in the emulator that will have to be installed. I am running everything wirelessly as a headless unit and getting into the Pi 4B and starting the emulation of the 9010A with VNC viewer. Um, let's go ahead and connect the 6502 pod and USB to serial converter and power supply to the 9010B hat here and the Pi 4B and we'll power on the Variac over here and we'll see how much current's being drawn. We have the 6502 pod plugged in and locked down and cabled in, plugged into the uh, I.O. connector on the, the Flukecom pod, 25 pin pod connector and we've supplied our DC voltage to it and we have a USB to serial interface RS-232 converter plugged in as well. Let's go ahead and shut off the the fluke over here, we're not going to need it anymore. It's obsolete because of that guy. All right, let's go over to the Variac and power on the Variac. And as you can see, we're on low, we're on low current, very low. There's the wattage. It's extremely low as well. Looks like we're below, well below 5 watts, 10, yeah, about 5 watts total of current consumption. Let's go ahead and uh, launch VNC Viewer. The Raspberry Pi, it's up and running. We'll launch the CodeBlocks Integrated Development Environment which is what we use to build the Fluke EMU WX emulator, which replaces the 9010A. And we'll open up a recent project. And we'll go ahead and say build and run. 
and we are up and running. Okay, so here's the emulator, the Fluke EMWX, we'll power it on, and because the 6502 pod is connected, we should be able to run a bus test, and it comes back and says, self test for the 6502 is okay. Wonderful news. All right, let's take the 6502 pod, disconnect the ribbon cable, and we'll come over here and plug it into this Apple II. There's nothing special with this Apple II other than the little circuit board that I've got here that allows me to uh, either plug uh, the 6502 processor in and lock it down into the ZIF socket or plug the uh, ribbon cable into the ZIF socket which plugs into the 6502 socket on the Apple II. I also have on this little card some IDE connectors that are used so that I can hook it up to this Agilent 1670G logic analyzer. Makes it really convenient I'm really concerned about the scarcity of the 6502 pods and the pins that are associated. I don't want to get the pins broke in any manner or bent. Very hard to replace and fine and expensive. Let's go ahead and plug the ribbon cable into the Apple II and power the Apple II on. We now have the 6502 pod which is connected to the Flucom 2.3 version plugged into my 6502 socket adapter card and we'll go ahead and turn the Apple II on. I do want to point out I have a special Apple II keyboard adapter here. Apple II keyboards are expensive, hard to find and this little adapter allows you to connect a good old standard $4 PS2 IBM keyboard into an Apple II. It make, makes it a lot easier to do things. So we're going to use that. And we'll power on the Apple II by hitting the switch. And as you can see on the monitor, the Apple II is live. And we can now come over to the Flukecom and run a bus test and it comes back and works just fine. Let's do a RAM short test. We'll start at address 0 and we'll go to 0 FFF. We'll test that uh, range of RAM in the Apple II. We'll hit enter and we'll wait. There it goes. It's testing the video RAM. We'll hit stop. We'll run the UUT and we can see that it has rebooted the Apple II. So we can do some various tests just like we can on a real 9010A. We can do it on the 9010B. Let's use the Apple II and load in that's under control by the 6502 fluke pod and the emulator hat that's running on top of the Pi 4B. Let's load a application into the Apple II over the cassette interface. We'll get into the Apple's monitor and we'll tell it that the cassette that we're going to want to load loads into memory location 3000 to 3200. Read it off the cassette and when you're done uh, go execute it, memory location 3000. We'll come over to the Windows 10 computer. We'll play the WAV file. It's plugging into the audio interface, the cassette interface. And here we go. Let's see what we get. You can see it's writing into video memory. And there we have it.
it is loaded. That is the Sublogix version 2 of Flight Simulator purchased by Microsoft. The guys did an excellent job on putting this together for us. That is now a boat anchor. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome work.